Hi, so today I'm going to be going over an 820-3330 board for a 2013 model, A1286, 15-inch Mac Pro. The problem with this board is that you get no voltage anywhere. You get 0.2 volts across the entire board, and I want to go over some of the things that I was doing as I was trying to test it and what I figured out. So the problem with this board is that you get absolutely nothing when you plug the charger in. So the first thing that I did to try to troubleshoot it, since I get nothing anywhere, is I decided to try and see what happens if I put 18 volts from my power supply in. So what I did over here that you can see is I, I actually I moved the fuse out of the way. And after I moved the fuse out of the way, what I did is I took the 18 volts from my bench power supply, which I'll show you how that works here. So I take my bench power supply, I got this thick piece of Cat5e cable that I use just for running wires to the bench power supply. And what I did is I soldered it on there. And I'll show you in the schematic in a second how exactly I did it. Might as well, while I'm waiting for the iron to heat up here, show you that part. So let's open the schematic. And show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so over here, CF6905, this is a fuse. So this is the MagSafe power jack. This is where you plug your charger in, and that goes to this fuse. So literally, right at this point, I get nothing. Since I get nothing here, I will get nothing after here, nothing at all, because at the very, very beginning, where power comes into the computer, I have shit. So what I did is I decided to put the charger power over here. So let me just show you what happens when I do that on this machine. I'm going to solder that wire on right now. Probably not going to do the best soldering job since I know I'm going to be removing it. So let's get my ground over here. Oh, air filter. Fuck. Hold breath, hold breath. <laughs> hold breath. This over there. Alright. I take the ground of the power supply. Put it on the ground of the board. Yeah, not the best soldering, but I am toe getting rid of that in a second, so who the fuck cares? And over here, I'm going to be putting the 18 volts. I take my 18 volts and I put it right there. So now instead of the machine getting 16 volts from the charger, it's going to be getting 16 volts from my power supply. So I'm going to turn on my power supply here. I have a HP Agilent 6542A. I love my 6542A. It's a great power supply. So I'm going to set it to voltage 17, current. I'm going to limit it to 3 amps just because, you know, if anything's going to blow up, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't decide to blow up on me. I take my tester screen over here. Okay. Plug it in. Get myself a test RAM stick so I can show you what's going on. Now I turn on the power supply, and I'm going to plug in the charger. These machines automatically turn on when you plug in the charger. Now my power supply went from saying that I'm drawing zero amps, to, and now it's saying that I'm drawing something. So let's try hitting the buttons required to turn this thing on. I left my tweezers outside. Uh, let's see if these wire cutters will do. Just a short nah. multimeter probe will do to short power pads. You can see my screen has come on. 
And what I ha noticed before when I originally did this is that it came onto the question mark. So what I know here is I know I've, I've most likely I have a good graphics chip, I have a good CPU, all the circuitry for creating the 3 volt rail, the 5 volt rail is there, my SMC is probably good, my ISL 6259 that takes 16 volts from the charger and turns it at 12 volts for the system. All of that right now I know is probably good because I'm getting a white light on the screen that turns into a question mark. As soon as I see that white light on the screen, that turns into a question mark. I know that 99% of my work is done if I have a no power issue. So all I have to do is figure out why is it that I'm getting zero volts everywhere on this machine. So it's not the DC infuse. So let's just go back over here and go over some of this. It's not my DC infuse because this is fine. My one wire circuit is fine. So this over here, SMC, BC, AC, OK, this is fine. My one wire circuit, PP3V42, is present. This logic gate works. This chip is fine. And let's go over what may actually be the problem here. So here's what kind of got me on this one, why I, why I was, I look like an idiot for the whole time I was working on it. So what I thought is, see this chip over here says from adapter, this inrush limiter. I thought that if this MOSFET was bad, right? I thought if this was bad, what would happen is that the 16 volts would stop over here and not make its way through to the machine. That was my logical assumption. And my logical assumption was completely fucking idiotic and wrong. What happens if, if this is not working, the charger won't send anything to the computer. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So that's Q7080. So this is what takes 16 volts from the charger. So right after that fuse, right after you get that fuse, you get from adapter over here. So right after that fuse that I, I have a wire going to. And let's check over here. So R this is supposed to open based on R7086, R7080, and R7081. So R7086 over here. Let's get up in the microscope and take a look at this. My tweezers, here we go. I knew they were somewhere. Okay, so R7080 is right here. Actually, that was R7086, my mistake. R7081 is right here. And R7080 is right there. You couldn't see. Uh, okay. R7080. Yeah, that. So that is one of the other resistors that's going to be in the voltage divider that goes to the gate of that transistor to tell it to open. And this is the other one. Does this look trustworthy to you? It doesn't look that trustworthy to me. Yeah. That looks like a pile of cock and balls, if I may say so myself. So my eyes have tested that resistor, and what my eyes have told me is my eyes told me that that resistor is bad. So I have not measured it with the multimeter. I'm just measuring it with my, you know, my brain, I guess. And, and that's, so let's go over and see what that does in the schematic. That was kind of cool. Look at this. Ooh. That's kind of fun. I could do this all day. It's like playing snake on ecstasy. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> it's easy to entertain me. So R7080. So once power goes through this. So this voltage divider, which is controlled by U7000 of R7080 and R7081, will control this opening and it doesn't strike me as something that is in good health. So let's take a look and get to work. That jiggles a lot, doesn't it? This microscope stand is jiggles all the time. This is why I can't use this thing at a high zoom because it gives me, it just makes me 
Makes me seasick. I mean, I don't mind having a microscope that only zooms uh, 10 and 30 with a regular stand. Resistor is in place. Resistor could look nicer. This is so the wrong way to use flux, but I haven't bought an empty syringe yet. I honestly, I went to search and I found a ton of syringes that have flux in them, but I actually want to just buy an empty one for this, and I didn't find one that I wanted. I didn't find any, actually. I know I'm probably just not looking hard enough. Right now, two people are on vacation at the same time, so... Yeah, about having time for myself or finding things I need. No such luck on that one. So that's way too much flux. That's absolutely disgusting. So feel free to troll. This will get ultrasonic off anyway, so I don't really care. Right. I have my perfect looking... Who am I kidding? Not even close to perfect, but nice looking resistors. In there. Alrighty. Now, where I attached my DC power supply, I'm just going to take the fuse and... Put it back there, so that my MagSafe has a path. Okay, time to rotate my fuse. These are the tweezers I used to apply the flux before. Uh, they're filled with flux, but that's fine. Make I love the, the most beautiful fuse joint in the world now. Why am I doing this on the edge of a table anyway? God, you get any space in New York City? You can't get any space in New York City. I'm doing everything on the edge. Okay. I'm constantly bumping into something when I service the 15-inch board. No jumping. You piece of shit. You knew what you were doing. And you did it anyway. Sit flat. Okay, we're getting somewhere.
But same shit. So let's see. Good guess, but still not working. Oh, duh, you didn't heat up yet. Beep. Green light. Fan spin. Give me a fan to make spin. Come on, I need this for my final testing. What did I do with all the fans? Here, that's an air fan. Aha! No fan spin just yet. But we have voltage on PP bus G3 hot. Hmm. Are you a non-working fan? Is my test fan that I picked up off of the floor dead? Yes. Peace. Fucking piece of dog shit. All right. We're good. So again, we'll have to run ASD on this and make sure sensors and all that good stuff works. But for now, I'm fairly happy. So let's go over what it was. So over here, a spike must have come in, I would guess, because of some knockoff charger. There was no liquid damage on this board at all. This board looked pristine, clear, beautiful, no liquid, no corrosion, no nothing. But on R7080 on the top here, you had some ridiculously nasty looking junk that I showed you under the microscope. So if this point had the visible shock, what else could have been fucked up? Current sensing resistor? Nah, th these two die all the time. This doesn't. And this point looked just fine. I also had measured these prior to doing the video and prior to driving myself nuts. And over here, this is the other point the source of Q7080. So I replace R7080, which looked disgusting, and I replace Q7080, which did not look disgusting, but was directly attached to R7080, which did look disgusting, and we have a working machine. So this 
was not letting the power go through the machine. And again, I learned something. I really thought that if something was wrong over here, because again, this has no path to ground, I thought that if there was something wrong over here, that the adapter would simply send 16 here or 17 here, stop, die, and not send it forward. But it actually winds up communicating with the charges as, hey, you know what? Q7080 doesn't work. So what I think happens is the ISL659, U7000 on SM bus charger SDA, SM bus charger I think that that winds up talking to the SMC. See how it says by? That's bi-directional data line. So this is going to talk to the SMC. Ahem. Oh. Yeah, so this turns into this for the SMC. SM bus, SMC5, G3, SDA. SM bus, SMC5, G3, SDA is going to go to the SMC. So that chip is going to talk to this. And then you have sys1 wire over here, sys underscore one wire. I really have to learn how to not be so s -y now that this microphone that I have picks them up like crazy. This is actually a good microphone. You can't blame the microphone. You bl blame the speaker. So you have sys1 wire over here. And this speaks to U6900. U6900 is going to speak to the charger. And so what I'm thinking is going on is when U7000 notices that Q7080 doesn't work, it tells the charger, you know what, instead of putting out power, since I'm not going to be getting it anyway, how about you be efficient and just don't send out anything at all? And that's what I imagine was happening here. That's, and now it works. And now I was in microscope view. I'm not quite sure how long I was in microscope view for. Let's go back here and check out the PDF. So yes, yeah, so this one wire is how the MagSafe communicates with the SMC. That SM bus data line is how the SMC communicates with U7000. U7000 is what controls Q7080, which is a MOSFET that will open or close depending on what U7000 tells it. And this pretty much was fucked. And so was this voltage divider. So U7000 on SM bus charger SDA told the SMC to tell the charger, hey, don't turn on. And that's how we got where we are right now. And by replacing R7080 and Q7080, I have a board that works that's ready to be sent back to my customer who say this actually got sent here from from Europe. So that, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, these videos are actually getting viewed in 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 countries where people are, are openly saying I don't speak English, to, you know, I'm speaking to you through a translator. I want to send you this and I mean, my the, these videos are getting that much of a reach is actually really really cool. Uh so that's it for today and I hope you learned something.